Question 18. For glucose that applies to a concentration of 1 mg per mil, the glucose concentration in filtrate is higher than in urine because... So immediately we can rule out B and D. D is incorrect as that would result in an increase in, in glucose concentration in the urine. So that's inverse to what the question is asking us. And that's because if we remove the water, well, we're going to increase the concentration of our end product and that end product is urine. So therefore glucose concentration will be much higher in urine than in the filtrate for D, so making it incorrect. B, that glucose is actively transported from the, uh, from the blood into the filtrate. Well, that is uh, wrong because that does that statement doesn't really talk about anything that would remove slash lower the glucose concentration as we go from filtrate to urine. Um, all we'd be doing is we'd be starting with a higher concentration of glucose in our filtrate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that our urine concentration is going to be lower. So we need some sort of process where we're removing um, slash lowering that concentration of glucose over the course of our journey from filtrate to urine. So that leads us with A and C. So let's take a look at A. Glucose is actively transported back into the blood. So what this essentially means is if we have this diagram, we have filtrate coming in one end of the nephron and urine popping out the other. So along the way, what we're going to be having is our uh, initial sort of plasma filtrate has say like a couple of um, glucose molecules in there and as we go along it's going to get sucked out by these transporters. So meaning that at the end we're going to have a much lower concentration of glucose than uh, in the urine than in the filtrate. But what happens is if the initial concentration of filtrate glucose is very, very high, or just high enough that um, it overwhelms these transporters, what we're going to get is um, instead of uh, glucose being completely removed from the plasma as it goes through the nephron, at the end in the urine, some of that glucose is going to be left over, but in a lesser concentration than in the initial filtrate. So A is actually the correct answer because it perfectly explains this process. You'll notice that, say, let's pick a plasma glucose concentration, so on that x-axis, a value of 2, and we match that up to the filtrate line. So what we're saying is that our initial glucose concentration in that, plasma, uh, in that filtrate sorry, is going to be 2. Well, in the urine, if we go down to that urine line, um, in the urine, what we'd get is a concentration of zero. So what we're saying is that if we have two milligrams per mil of, oh, sorry, of glucose in the filtrate, um, at the end, no glucose will be found in the urine. And that's because these uh, transporters aren't being overwhelmed and they're managing to suck out all the glucose. But you'll notice if we go to higher concentrations of plasma glucose, say 10 for the filtrate, well, if we look down at the urine concentration, that will be 8 milligrams per mil. So what we're saying is that if in our initial uh, plasma filtrate, we have a really high concentration of glucose, at the end, well, not all of it's going to be removed, so we're still going to have that value of 8 milligrams per mil. So A perfectly explains why, um, perfectly explains that graph and is therefore the correct answer because glucose is actively transported back into the blood. Why is C incorrect? That water progressively moves into the nephrons and dilutes the glucose. Well, C is incorrect as in the graph, um, it would make sense for most of the graph, except for plasma glucose concentrations, that initial plasma glucose concentration, the x-axis value of under two. And the reason for that is because under a plasma glucose concentration of 2 in the filtrate, our urine concentration is 0. So what we're saying is that um, if we have 2 at the beginning in the filtrate, um, no plasma glucose is going to be coming out in the urine. But 
if we were just diluting it, that wouldn't be correct because if we dilute um, something, there's still going to be a, a little bit of that particle in the water. Even though it might be less concentrated, it's still going to be there, correct? So, but that's not what's happening. All of that uh, glucose is being removed. We're not seeing a lower concentration of glucose. We're seeing a complete removal of that glucose. So C cannot be correct as uh, the graph disproves that for filtrate concentrations of glucose under two because we see a complete removal of glucose in the urine versus a sort of dilution effect. So C is incorrect and A is correct for question 18. Question 19, figure one indicates that all glucose is absorbed from the filtrate. So A is very clearly the correct answer for this. As we've talked about this before, below a certain filtrate concentration, we're going to see all of the glucose being absorbed and nothing appearing in the urine. And that is below a filtrate concentration of about 2 slash 2.2. So uh, the answers B, C, and D are all very incorrect. So C and D are incorrect because that implies that there is still some glucose remaining in the urine um, for both those answers. And that is, yeah, so that's just blatantly not correct. Um, and B, above a filtrate concentration, no, we need to be, we need to have lower filtrate concentrations so that we're not um, overwhelming those transporters. If we go above that certain concentration, we're just going to increase the amount of glucose that those transporters have to try and remove and therefore increase the chance they're going to be overwhelmed. So the only correct answer is A, that below a filtrate concentration of about 2.2 milligrams per mil, all the glucose is going to be absorbed from the filtrate. 